Hi, Phil Aston here from Nasbini Magazine with episode, yes it is, I need to look down to check, episode 10 of the Jethro Tall Super Deluxe Edition series. And this time we're heading off to the woods and Song of the Woods. So let's dive in and have a look. Songs from the Wood. Again, this is where I started from my journey with this album. I was playing in rock bands at the time. I was still very young, about 18. And the fact that Jethro Tull doing these almost like folky albums was quite interesting to me. So the first CD I bought is just basically a short essay and the lyrics. And I think it might have had literally two bonus tracks. So when this was announced, you can understand why people absolutely started doing somersaults in their heads. The original 1977 album remixed to studio stereo and 5.1 surround by Stephen Wilson. Includes unreleased songs, alternative versions, plus the 1977 US live co concert on video and stereo 5.1. Rock and roll. Um, absolutely superb. Three CDs and two DVDs and 96 page booklet. It's just amazing, isn't it? You know, a 96 page book as well. These are books. These are books. These are no the way of describing it. You know, they've got the concerts, the associated recordings. Anyway, let's dive in. This is what you want to see, isn't it? Just as before, everything follows the pattern of the original album. So you are back in the time. So the, you know, the nice colour effect there behind the songs of the wood. It's like as if it's written on wood. There they are around the campfires. They get, you see the Jethro at all, they played the part. Whatever the theme of the album was, they dressed up for that. You know, they're now country, they're now living on the country. They're like salmon farmers into folklore, myths and legends of Britain. And here they are. So they really took to this. They really did. They just played the part. All of them. You haven't got one member of the band saying, no, I'm going to wear my leather trousers and studied belt. They all went for it. So they all looked, you know, they really looked the part. And this is one of Jethro Tull's most timeless and easily accessible albums of all time. It really is. Um, great photographs. Great story. Great songs. Um... And all the detail you could possibly want on this. So, yes, if you haven't got this, you know, I think I always thought that was a fantastic advert, like the pretending the tree was a turntable. Um, let's press photo there. Some lyrics, stories behind the songs. We can get the Salty Spells, of course, which came at the same time, which is a bit of a hit for our Mr. Anderson and, and the tool at the time. I remember seeing that advert in lots of music magazines for uh, Martin Barr there. Folklore, what that, what was the inspiration behind the songs, of course, ley lines, and all that kind of pagan mythology was also there as well. You know, it was very interesting he was getting into that. Um, the tour dates from the time, ev all of them. More press ads. And then tr uh, producer Trevor White tells a story, he spent several years in 1970 working just O'Toole. Some nice photographs again from the time. The difficult takes time, the impossible takes a little bit longer. Jacko here talks about how he's used 21st technology to remix the live stuff. Um, and, and it is absolutely brilliant. You know, this is absolutely fantastic. DVD film Jethro Tull live on this tour makes this an absolutely essential set for any tall fan. The Songs for the Wood by Jethro Tall. This is when Ian just immersed himself in all the English folklore, all the paganism, the ley lines, the standing stones and everything else he could find. I didn't start to get interested in that for, for a long time after this. In, in 1977, I was still full on metal man. I really was, you know, punk was maybe making my taste a little bit raw around the edges on what I was exploring, but I was in a band at the time called Cloud Nine, and um, the bass player said, have you heard Jethro Tilson album? I went, uh, nope, because the last thing I'd heard was Bitch from the Gallery, which, I, as you know, I loved. But this, I just thought, oh, he's gone, he's gone all acoustic. 
Ah, what was I like? It's one of his finest albums as well, isn't it? It's just got such great tracks on it. Um, you know, Jack of the Green, A Hunting Girl, um, The Whistler. You know, it's, it's just absolutely, you know, superb stuff on this, isn't there? It really is, you know, it's absolutely brilliant stuff. Um, so, and of course you've got all the live material as you've just seen, which is also superb. But yes, this was a change in direction for Jethro Tull. And as you saw when I went through it, they just dressed the part, didn't they? Whatever the concept was, the whole band went, yeah, we'll do that, we'll dress up. Yeah, it's not a problem. And there aren't many bands who can do that. And I think this kind of Englishness, this eccentricity of individuals, it just makes them unique. And I mean, you know, I mean, back in the time, I'm going to see Jethro Tull, really? Because they were seen as being a bit old hat in some circles when, when I was a kid at this point, but they so weren't. And those of you who knew, um, and the fact that so many Jethro Tull fans who weren't there at the time are now under learning about this band, this is a superb album. And I, I know it's one of the most popular box sets in this series. It really is. So next time, on episode 11, we're going to be looking at its sister or brother, which is Heavy Horses from 1978. So stay safe, keep spinning those records, please subscribe if you haven't. Big thank you to Chris, Clive and Yogi and all my patrons for all your support. I really, really appreciate it. And I shall see you on my next video.